So this is the data from Mordax. We've got an oscilloscope, spectrum analyzer, spectrograph, tuner, wave output, clock output, and voltage monitor. We've also got a settings menu with eight save slots and buttons above and below to select various things on screen. Let's start with an oscilloscope. We've got four channels. We access the four channels there and then we can control the automatic triggering of the screen, so whether that's looking for a threshold that we can set to try and get a nice, clean, non-moving waveform, or whether this is just automatically re-triggering and we get this sort of cycling waveform on the screen. We can also change the time scale from microseconds to milliseconds to seconds, so we can see super slow LFOs and audio rate signals as well. Let's check out a wavetable. Before we get into the settings, simple triangle wave, here's moving through a wavetable on my oscillator. One of the controls on my oscillator seems to have the digital top end, but without visualising it, it's hard to be 100% what's happening. Now we can see as I scroll through that wavetable, it's like a bit crush effect, we can see this stair step in the waveform. We've got buffered outputs for the four inputs. And these are completely buffered, not just a passive copy. So we get exact copies of our four inputs to patch back out around the rest of the system, which saves getting buffered multiples, or at best and cheapest, if it didn't have to be an accurate signal, passive multiples and stackables. We can also monitor LFOs. So let's listen to a filter. Take this sound that we currently had into a filter. There's a manual filter sweep. Let's take a slow LFO into the input and take the buffered copy of the LFO up to my filter. I'll turn down my LFO because it's currently at audio rate. Also make it a sign. So you can see in that current view, it's completely flat near enough. Let's change this to auto triggering. You can see that LFO going up and down. Let's change the time. Keep it still. Let's go a bit faster, modulate the LFO. So with more complex modulation, it's really great to see what's actually going on. Let's modulate this LFO even further. So it's great for CV and modulation, you can use gates, clocks, triggers, as well as audio. You can turn on four channels change their position, scale the input, as well as the time and the normal or auto triggering modes. It's a really comprehensive oscilloscope. So let's use the clock output mode to create some beats. Going into the menu and clock output, we see you've got two clocks 
We can use a clock in on the first input, a reset in on the second, use an internal or external clock. We can CV these divisions and multiplications as well. I've got an external sequencer with a gate pattern playing a kick drum and a clock signal. So here's the kick. I'm going to patch in the clock into the first input and set this to receive external clock. See straight away that's taken the tempo from the 120 BPM that was the internal down to 86.7. Patch a reset into the second in. It just ensures that as I stop the sequence and start it again, everything's going to keep back onto beat one. Let's trigger a snare drum from the first output. Going through the features, I've got external clock PPQ set to 4, which is right. I'm going to divide that by 2 for the snare. And let's offset this. And we can see the clock in and the two division outs and I've actually offset that snare drum. Let's add a sort of chirpy little sort of noise sim to the second clock out. Let's set that to be two times faster than it is. Now, because we've got buffered outputs, I'm going to take the clock that I have into the first input, patch it out into a random module, and I'm going to use a random module to fire off certain amounts of auxiliary send into a reverb. So you can hear certain hits stepped in time, fire a little burst of reverb. Other than just offsetting these beats onto the right place, such as the snare drum, we could actually create more wonky times and human-like rhythms and sort of nice wonky sloppy hip-hop grooves by offsetting these and creating things like flams, pushes and pulls on certain parts. So let's push and pull this chirpy little hi-hat-like synth to create a new feel to the groove. So I'm going to go to the offset. Just pushing that off gives the groove a completely different feel. Pulling that back. Nice and tightly in time. Let's push it out again. And let's pull the snare a little bit early. got a kind of custom swing and shuffle to the beat. Now we can CV these divisions and CV the offset. I'm going to put these back straight on the grid. Let's use the CV for the offset. Scale that down, slow the LFO down, let's bring in the kick and snare again. So you can use the third and the fourth inputs to CV either the division or the offset of both of those clocks. So in this patch, I wanted to check out the dual waveform generators and create a stereo melodic duophonic patch that's two oscillators and two VCAs from the Mordax data using two envelopes to control those and two sequences to control their pitches. So first, we'll go into the wave output mode. 
So you've got two waveforms. We change their frequency or their note. They track volt per octave, so we can actually CV these like any other oscillator. And we can change their amplitude. First, I'm going to change them both to be sine waves. So I hit wave one. Cycle through to type. Now let's go triangle wave. Wave two. I'm going to do the same. Two triangle waves, they're both tuned the same, no A3 at 220 hertz and 220 hertz on the top one. So patching in my sound, I should have a triangle wave panned left and a triangle wave panned right. These are going into a reverb. They're going to fade up and down as we go. I've got two sets of sample and hold, stepped random voltages. These are going into the two channels on the ADAC quantizer with a nice sort of F minor 7, F, A flat, C, and E flat, just active. So it's going to be fairly harmonious and melodic without too much dissonance. I've got two random triggers, which are triggering when this quantizer will actually quantize and grab a voltage. And I'm using a copy of those triggers to trigger two envelopes, which will later modulate the amplitude. We'll start by modulating the pitch. So I want to modulate the first oscillator with the first channel, second oscillator with the second. We're going to CV, so let's CV1 for that channel, go to CV2 for the frequency of the second channel. Two melodic sequences. This is the reverb we're going into. Oh, very well and good. Let's actually get some amplitude. So I want to modulate the amplitude of channel two with the fourth CV in. And let's pick the third CV in for that channel. So here's an envelope for the first, and an envelope for the second. And these respond really well to nice tight envelopes. Let's get some reverb. There's nice tight clicks. Let's open these envelopes up. And let's just zoom into that screen so you've got a clearer picture of what's going on. Let's change those waveforms. So not only is the Mordex Data a great oscilloscope, four channel fully featured oscilloscope, we've got all this other generation as well. And this waveform generation means you get two extra oscillators coupled with two digital VCAs to control their amplitude, which is sort of backbone of a basic synth voice. So this is just a really quick patch to show that this waveform generator can go down to LFO rates. We've got a saw wave into a filter on the bird kid's voice. There's a quick filter sweep. Leaving the cutoff around half, I'm gonna turn up its attenuator for the CV in. This is waveform one from the data, straight to modulate the cutoff. This is currently one hertz. This goes right up to audio. You can select the thousands, the hundreds, the tens, the ones, the first or the second decimal places. That slowed down as well, another really useful thing is you can attenuate and change the amplitude. So here's amplitude at 100%, we'll first just go a little faster. 
Let's scale down this amplitude. You can hear that's affecting less of the cutoff range. So this right down. So let's check out the voltage monitor. This will monitor four voltages on the four inputs and we've got the buffered outputs to copy those back elsewhere in the patch. We get a numerical readout per channel as well as a visualisation of the waveform on the way in. These are four stepped random voltages, four sample and holds from different sources, all clocked in time. I'm taking the buffered outputs, one to a quantizer to change the pitch, and then I'm going into mutable instruments rings, where the pitch information and the random modulation is moving brightness, the position, the structure of the sympathetic strings on this particular mode in rings, and also the dampening and the length of those notes. This is then going into the tip top audio ZDSP for some reverb. We can also change the outputs to be offsets and change the output modes from CV, momentary and latching gates and set the thresholds for the gate high and the gate low. We can get the gates from the additional outputs on the module. So let's check out the tuner. It's a nice high quality accurate tuner that gives us a note readout, the octave that we're in and the hertz, the frequency. We can flick through which input we're looking at on these buttons. Currently got no signal into input four. And I'm gonna use the first three inputs to create basic major chord. Let's just go C major, C, E and G. So this is my first oscillator. And let's tune to a C. I'm just moving the fine tune on my oscillator. This is going into the data, then straight out of its buffered output into a mixer. Here's the second channel. Dissonant, horrible. Let's monitor that. Come up an octave. And go up to a third, an octave above. So we're looking for E4. tune there but I'm happy with that for now. Here's my third oscillator. Out of tune C, sounds like it's in unison. Let's get this a fifth above to a G. It's a nice harmonious chord, not a lot else to say. Great for checking the frequency or the hertz as we can see there and there and the note and what the frequency should be to get to that note. So we've also got a spectrum analyzer and a spectrograph. Let's check out the spectrum analyzer first. Just turn up my input. If I move up this oscillator that's mixed with the drums, Turn the drums down. You can see that the most prominent point for the most prominent bin frequency readout changes. We can select the different window types. Let's check out the spectrograph with the same input. Again, I'm going to pitch up these octaves. You can 
can see on screen that prominent fundamental in my oscillator. We can stop this from running to freeze it. We can clear it. And again, we've got the various window types. Selecting which input we're monitoring is as simple as hitting one of the four buttons at the bottom.